to be here today to offer worship again to the God of heaven. We're thankful to see those that are here. We're thankful to see those who have joined us online as well. What a great way to start out the week, to be in the uh, presence of each other, but most of all, be in the presence of God himself, the creator of all mankind and the giver of all great and perfect gifts. We want to begin this morning's worship with a reading from God's Word, the Bible, that I think is especially fitting for us today. In Psalm 30, verse number 4, the Bible says, Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holy name. For His anger is but for a moment, His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. If you're glad to be here, say amen. Amen. Let us worship God today in spirit and in truth. Good morning, family. If you love the Lord this morning, say amen. 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 It's good to see everyone. We ask for traveling grace and blessings for everyone that's still on their way this morning. I ask that if you would lift up your voice and sing with me where you are, yield not to temptation. Number 111, you will yield not to temptation. All three verses. <clears throat> yield. Not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some other to win. Fight manfully onward, dark passions subdue. Just look ever to Jesus. And Jesus will carry you through. So why don't you ask 
the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you, and he is willing to aid you, and Jesus will carry you through, and shun evil companions, bad language disdain. God's name hold in reverence, nor take it in vain. Be thoughtful and earnest, kind-hearted and true. Just look ever to Jesus, and Jesus will carry you through. So why don't you ask? the Savior to help you. Oh, he'll come for strengthen and keep you. He is willing to aid you, and Jesus will carry you through. To him that all cometh, God give it the crown. Through faith we shall conquer, though often cast down. And he who is our Savior, our strength will renew. Just look ever to Jesus, and Jesus will carry you through. So why don't you ask? the Savior to help. Oh, he'll comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you, and Jesus will carry you through. Why don't you ask the Savior to help you? Oh, he'll come but strengthen and keep you. He is willing to aid you. And Jesus will carry you through. We'll now have scripture and prayer. Today's scripture reading comes from Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. And it reads, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, Every good tree bears good fruits, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. May God add a blessing to the readers and doers of his word. We will now have prayer. Let us pray. Dear wise and kind Father, dear Heavenly Father, we'll come to you this morning, Father, with our heads bowed and our hearts humble, Father. Thanking you for this day, Father. Thanking you for allowing us to be present in this place, Father. Dear wise and Heavenly Father, we just pray for the ones that's on their way, Father. Get them safe passage, Father, where they can come and assemble with the saints, Father. Dear wise and Heavenly Father, we just ask you to lift us up, Father, as we sing hymns, Father, and honor your name this day, Father. We know, Father, this day is your day, Father, so let's, let our attention and focus be on you, Father. Dear wise and heavenly, Father, we just pray for the man of the hour this morning, Father. Pray for recollection and the knowledge he needs, Father, to deliver your message, Father, in a way that we might all want to apply to our everyday lives, Father. Dear wise and heavenly, Father, we just Pray for our, our sick and shelter this morning. 
We ask you, Father, to just stop in and look after them, Father, this morning. Lift them up, Father. Give them what they stand in need of, Father. Take, touch them caretakers of theirs, Father, where they can get them the things that they need, Father, where they can restore their health, Father. Dear wise and heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father, once again for blessing us to be here, Father, and assembled, Father, where your will could be done, Father, and you can get the honor and glory you need this morning, Father. Dear wise and heavenly Father, we just also pray for the one that's grieving this morning, Father. We ask you to just continue to wrap your arms around them, Father, and touch them, Father, in their time of need, Father. Dear wise and heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father, for what you're doing here at the Eastern Street Church of Christ, Father. We know, Father, without your will, Father, it can't be done, Father. Dear heavenly Father, we just pray, Father, as we move forward through your service, Father, that you get everything you need, Father, and, and all our attention and focus be on you, Father. Dear wise and heavenly Father, we just thank you again, Father, just for allowing us our sins to be washed away father we thank you father for washing the sins of the of our enemies away father do wise and heavenly father we ask you to just be with us and guide us father as we move forward through your service that everything be done decent and in order in your son jesus name we pray amen As we go forward in our service, we'll sing, I Still Have Joy. So after all the things we've been through, especially in this past year, we still have joy. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> still have joy. Oh, I still have joy. After all the things I've been through, I still have joy joy and i still have joy yes i still have joy after all the things i've been through i still have joy and i still have love oh i still have love after all the things i've been through i still have love and i still have peace yes i still have peace after all the things i've been through i still have still have faith i still have faith yes i still have faith after all the things i've been through i still have still have joy i still have joy yes i still have joy after all the things i've been through i still have still have joy i still have joy lord i still have joy after all the things i've been through i still have joy <clears throat> he's a wonderful savior to me he's a wonderful savior to me and i hope he's a wonderful savior to to you amen amen, amen. amen. he's a wonderful savior to me Verses 1, 2, and 4, page 159. <clears throat> I was lost in sin, but Jesus rescued me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. And I was bound by fear, but Jesus set me free. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For he's a wonderful savior to me. Oh, he's a wonderful savior to me. And I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful savior to me. And he's a friend so true, so patient and so kind. He's a wonderful savior to me. 
and everything I need in him I always find. He's a wonderful savior to me. For oh, he's a wonderful savior to me. For oh, he's a wonderful savior to me. And I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful savior to me. Drearer grows the love of Jesus day by day. He's a wonderful savior to me. And sweeter is his grace while pressing on my way. He's a wonderful savior to me. For he's a wonderful savior to me. For he's a wonderful savior to me. And I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For he's a wonderful Savior to me. Oh, he's a wonderful Savior to me. And I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and he's a wonderful Savior to me. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, took it upon himself to leave his riches and glory and come down on this sin-cursed world to offer us an eternity with him in heaven. It is my prayer, it is my hope that as we've come together today that we've done so with Jesus on our minds. It is my prayer, it is my hope that as you woke up this morning that you had Jesus on your mind. For surely he had us on his mind, or he, we wouldn't be here today. We want to say to all of those who are visiting with us, we are thankful that you're here. It's our prayer, it is our hope that you feel welcome, and that you will come back again and again until you are no longer a visitor, but you become one of us. Uh, we are just thankful we are just thankful that God has blessed us with another uh, beautiful day to worship him. And we were going to worship just on the first and third Sundays outside, but we knew that today was supposed to be such a beautiful day. So we wanted to take another opportunity to be able to come together and worship outside together. We want you to stay hopeful, stay prayerful. Uh, I firmly believe that good things come to those who wait upon the Lord. And I just look forward to the day in which we are able to assemble inside the building together again. I don't know about you, but I've been thinking about God this last week. And there was a passage of scripture that I have been studying over the last week. If you have your copy of God's book, the Bible, I would ask that you meet me in Matthew chapter seven, Matthew chapter seven, verses 15 through 20. Matthew chapter seven, verses 15 through 20. And as you know, this year we have been talking about discipleship and today's lesson, I pray, is great encouragement uh, to you as it was to me. Matthew chapter 7, uh, verses 15 through 20. The Bible records these words. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. 
Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. I want to use for a subject this morning the preponderance of evidence. The preponderance of evidence. If you want a subtitle, you could use, does the evidence show that you're a disciple? Does the evidence show that you are a disciple? When we think in terms of preponderance of evidence, preponderance of evidence is a type of evidence standard that is used in a civil court of law. Under the preponderance standard, the burden of proof is met when the party with the burden convinces the fact finder that there is greater than a 50% chance that the claim is true. This is the burden of proof in a civil trial. My question today is, there enough evidence in your life, in my life, is there more than 50% proof, a preponderance of evidence, if you will, that you are truly a disciple of Christ. I know that you go to church, uh, so to speak, because I can see your car. I can see some of you through the windshield. So uh, there is some evidence that you go to church, but is that the only evidence in your life and in my life? If God takes a picture, if God were to weigh all of the evidence of your life, not just this hour from 1015 to 1115, but if God were to put your life on a scale, would there be enough evidence to prove that you are more than just a church goer, not just a believer of Christ, but truly a follower of Christ? Well, guess what, my friends? All of us are going to stand in God's great eternal court called the judgment. Uh, some of y'all are looking at me funny, I can tell. But I know that what I'm saying is right because when you look in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse number 13 and 14, I know that we're going to stand in the court of God's eternal judgment. Whether I want to go, whether I want to be there or not, I'm going to be there. Because Solomon puts it this way, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Now watch this. 
For God shall bring every work into the judgment, whether with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So I know that it is important that there is a preponderance of evidence in my life that I am a Christian. Because when I stand in judgment, if there's not enough evidence to show that I am a disciple of Christ, uh, my end result is not going to be good, is it? Every Christian ought to be concerned with whether there is sufficient evidence to show that he or she is not just a believer, but a disciple, a true follower of Christ. Somebody said, well, how do I know if I'm more than just a believer? That's what today's lesson is designed to do. We're going to look at some characteristics of those who are more than just believers in God, more than just churchgoers. First of all, when I look in Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 20, the Bible says that there's going to be some fruit in my life. Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 20, the Bible puts it like this. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. You can tell what kind of person you're dealing with by the way they act, can't you? You can tell what kind of driver you're dealing with just by the way that they drive, can't you? You can tell what kind of person somebody is by the way that they drive. If they see the light turning yellow and they've got more than enough time to stop and instead of slowing down and stopping, what do they do? They hit the gas and they go on through that intersection they are telling you something about their character, aren't they? When I think about this idea, I see it again and again in Scripture. You shall know them by their fruit. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 33, the Bible says a tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be what? Good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be what? Bad. Then I see in Mark or Matthew chapter 3 and verse number 10, somebody says, well, why is it such a big deal whether I have good fruit or bad fruit on my tree? Well, we've got to realize God has an ax, and God's ax is real. In Matthew chapter 3 and verse number 10, the Bible says, even now the ax of God's judgment is poised, is ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be what? Chopped down and thrown into the fire. God says that not only are you to produce good fruit, but if there's not enough good fruit on your tree called life, God says that in the day of judgment, he's going to take his judgment act and he's going to sever your roots and cast you into the fire. I don't know about you, but the only thing I like fire for is for cooking and staying warm. But you can run anything in the ground, can't you? Even though I like a fireplace, I don't like for the fireplace to burn my house down. Even though I like a warm, sunny day, I love the sun. I don't like for the sun to be uncomfortable, to be unbearable. The same way, we don't want God to throw us into the fire called hell, do we? A disciple of Jesus Christ will bring forth spiritual fruit. Jesus said it like this in John chapter 15 and verse number 8. When you produce much fruit, not just a little fruit. Somebody says, well, I produced some fruit back in 2020. Yeah. Well, 
What have you done for God lately? Not just what you should have fruit that you're bearing each day of your life. Am I right about it? We sing these songs. Each day I'll do a golden deed by helping those who are in need. We ought to be doing something daily to show that we are truly those that belong to Christ Jesus and not just church goers. In the parable of the sower, Jesus talked about seeds that were falling on different kinds of ground, which represents the different reactions to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Turn with me to Mark chapter 4 and verse 13 through 20. I want you to ask as we read and we elaborate on this passage, what kind of believer are you? When you heard the gospel, if this is your one of your first times even today hearing the gospel, I'll tell you something. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. The fact that Jesus came, he died on the cross. He did that for you and me. And he did so after living a sin-free life. And the fact that he did that for you and he did it for me, it ought to be something that causes our hearts to be warmed by what he's done. But it also ought to be something that bothers you and I. The fact that Jesus had to die on a cross for me in the first place, that bothers me. Why? Because my life, the things that I have done, my shortcomings, my evil deeds, my evil thoughts are, are the result of why Jesus had to die on the cross in the first place. So the least I can do, the least you can do is to give thanks to God for that and be baptized into his church called the Church of Christ. If you are under the sound of my voice and you haven't been baptized into the church of Christ, you need to do that today. You don't need to just wait for another day. Why? Because you might not get another day. The day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. God has been good. God has blessed you to be able to hear his word. So you ought to respond today, not tomorrow, not on a more convenient day. Do you think it was convenient for Jesus to die on that cross? No, it wasn't convenient, but he did it anyway. So the same ought to be true for everybody who hasn't been baptized into the church of Christ. Right. You need to do it today. Why? Because until you are baptized into the church of Christ, you don't have spiritual roots, and your life is just that. It's a life that's going to end here on earth. But if you answer the gospel call, if you hear the gospel which you've heard, and you believe in it, you repent, yeah. you turn from your life, and you come to Jesus. Guess what? God says, I will bless you. I will make you one of my children. And if you stay faithful unto death, I'll give you a home in heaven. So the question then becomes, what kind of follower or what kind of listener are you going to be? Look in Mark chapter 4 and verse number 13. Then Jesus said to them, if you can't understand the meaning of this parable, how will you understand all the other parables? The farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. Watch verse 15. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. See, these are the kind of folk that right, right. they hear what I'm saying. It, they know what I'm saying Amen. is right, Amen. but they don't take it to heart. Right. And so what happens is like a bird comes and takes away seed. Satan comes and they are allowing Satan to come and take away the teaching of God's word. And they allow that word to go on and they don't listen to it. They try to avoid the truth. Right. 
They know that what I'm saying is right. They know that what you're being taught is found in the word of God. And you can find it. You can trace the teaching directly to the word of God. But they always say, well, I hear what you're saying, but not today. Maybe on another day. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Funeral homes are filled up with folk that thought they had another day. Uh, you know, there are a lot of folk that said, I'll, I'll do it another day. I am reminded of a man called Agrippa. Oh, yeah. And uh, when Paul had preached to him, yes, he, uh, he preached the truth to him. And Agrippa understood. And he said, almost, yes, sir. he said, almost, you persuade me to become a Christian. Yeah. But I don't read anywhere else in the Bible where Agrippa obeyed the gospel. Agrippa allowed the word to be taken away from his heart quickly. Then I see in verse number 16, the seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems and are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed, verse 18, that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly. The message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things, so no fruit is produced. See, a lot of us, fall in that category. We have received the gospel. We've been baptized into Christ, but the, but the seed can't grow the way it's supposed to grow because I've got too much stuff in my life. And I, when you have too many weeds in your yard, see, uh, if you've got a healthy yard, it takes a healthy lawn a long time in the springtime to start turning green. Why? Because there's nothing but grass in that yard. But if you want to see a unhealthy yard, as soon as February rolls around and all it just starts turning green and different shades of green, that is an indication that there are all kinds of weeds in that yard. And see, some of us have weeds in our life. We have the weed of worry. We worry more about what's going to happen today and what's going to happen tomorrow. What's going to happen next year? We're so worried about the future until we can't appreciate what I've got today. Why am I worried about all of these things that might not even happen? We ought to be thankful for what we have today. Some of us are worried more about money than we are about spiritual treasures in heaven. Some of us are spend all of our time putting money under the mattress of your bed. But I ask you today, what kind of treasures are you laying up in heaven? Because until you lay up treasures in heaven, you're laying them up in the wrong place. Do you not know that the moth, the, that the ants and all those insects and things can come and they can eat up the stuff that you're putting under your mattress? But the things that you lay up in heaven, God will count you faithful for them. Then when I look this morning, I see... The final category is those who bring forth fruit. In verse 20, notice what it says. And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as has been planted. See, all of us ought to be bringing forth some kind of fruit in our lives. Hebrews puts it this way. He says, therefore, in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 15, therefore let us offer through Jesus 
a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. What is that? When we praise God, that is a type of spiritual fruit. Then somebody says, what we say, you know, not only praising God is a kind of fruit, but even the way we speak is a kind of fruit right, that we bear Amen. for God. What are you talking about, preacher? Luke chapter 6 and verse number 45. Luke 6 and verse number 45. The Bible says, a good person, a good person, do you see that? A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. What you say, right. the Bible say, right. flows from what is your in point. your heart. Amen. If you, when you hit your finger with a hammer, uh, what you say flows from the treasury of your heart. Right, when somebody pulls out in front of you, what you say or don't say flows from the treasury of your heart. I know I'm telling the truth yes, anyway. Yes, when your husband mm -hmm. or wife mistreats you, what you say flows from the treasury of your heart. Mm -hmm. How you respond to that flows from the treasury of your heart. If I am sowing good seeds, good is going to flow from my mouth. Mm -hmm. Then I'll tell you this, a change in conduct and character is also a type of spiritual fruit. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing it to a close. Right. See, somebody out there today, I know you're out there, Somebody needs to make a change in your conduct. Your character needs to be improved. Why? So that you can start bearing spiritual fruit. There's somebody that hasn't been baptized into the Lord's church, the church of Christ, and you need to make a change in your conduct. You need to make a change in your character. The fact that I can show you everything that I believe written in Scripture, uh, and that ought to mean something to you. Am I making Man. any sense this morning? The fact that we come together to worship God in spirit and in truth on the first day of the week, I can find that in Scripture. I know that I'm telling the truth. Why? Because in Acts chapter 20 and verse number 7, yeah. the Bible says, And upon the first day of the week, yes, when the disciples Amen. came together yes, to break bread, mm -hmm. Paul continued his speech Amen. unto midnight. It lets me know that in the church of Christ, the first century church, they came together uh -huh. on the first day of each week Amen. to worship God. But not only did they worship God, but Acts chapter 20 and verse number seven says that they broke bread mm -hmm. when they got there. They didn't just do it once a month. They didn't just do it once a quarter. Why? Because the New Testament church, mm -hmm. the church of Christ is going to follow what the Bible says. Amen. That's why after the message today, we're going to observe the Lord's Supper. Why? Because that's what they did in the first century church. That's what the Church of Christ did in the first century. We're not going to wait and do it quarterly. Why? Because every week has a first day. And if every week has a first day, I'm going to observe the Lord's Supper every first right, day. Right. You can turn on that chainsaw, but I'm telling you something. God is going to do what God is going to do Amen. any kind of way. Am I right about Amen. it? God said, and the fact that I can worship God 
on the first day of the week and I come with and I observe the Lord's Supper. Somebody say, well, uh, we, we give every first day of the week. Why is it that you can give every first day of the week but you don't want to observe the sacrifice of Jesus every first day of the week. Something is wrong with that. Amen. Somebody needs to make a change in conduct, a change in character today. Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 19 and following, and the lesson will be yours. Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 19. The Bible says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Oh, somebody said, how do I know if I'm following the sinful desires? Well, he says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. There's sexual immorality, yeah. impurity, yeah. lustful pleasures, mm -hmm. idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, and all of these things, he says, and other sins like these. He says, let me tell you again, as I've said before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But verse 22, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. When you come to Jesus and you will change your character, you change your conduct, look at the fruit that you're going to produce. He says, this kind of fruit is love. Yeah. Then you add to the love, joy, yeah. peace, mm -hmm. patience. Oh, we need patience, yeah. don't we? We need kindness. We got goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these, there is no law. And then watch verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. Why? Because I've changed the character in my life. I'm changing the character. I'm changing my conduct. And because I'm doing that, I'm going to have a peace that passes all understanding. I don't know about you, but the, what the world needs today is peace and joy. I know that I'm telling the truth because folk are worried about this. They're worried about that. I, 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 I tell you, I'm, I, I'm ready for the coronavirus to go away, but I know this, I'm going to be all right because I've got the love of Jesus working in my life. I want things to be different, but thanks God, they are as good as they are today because it can always be worse than it is today. I, oh, I believe that somebody out there needs to come to Jesus today. You've heard the gospel. Believe it with all of your heart. Be willing to repent of your sins. Come out of your car this morning, and what we will do is we'll ask you a question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? If you answer yes to that question, we will baptize you this morning for the remission of your sins. I tell you something, the heaven is ready. Are you ready Amen. this morning? Amen. There's a young person somewhere in one of these cars. You've been coming to Eastland all your life and you've been wondering, when am I gonna get baptized? I tell you something, today ought to be your day. Don't wait, stop putting it off. There's an adult somewhere in one of these cars. You've been putting it off. You know that you've got the truth and you're worried about what's going to happen if I get baptized. You don't worry about what's going to happen if you get baptized. What you ought to be worried oh, yeah. about is what's going to happen if you don't get baptized. Jesus.
Jesus say, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yes, Jesus is knocking at the door. Are you going to open up the door and let him in? Come on. Come on to Jesus right now. Will you come to Jesus? Amen. Come on to Jesus. Amen. I am resolved. I am resolved no longer to linger, drawn by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. And I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. And I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the true one, he is the just one, he has the words of life. And I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. And Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to follow the Savior, faithful and true each day. Heed what he saith, do what he willeth, he is the living way. And I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. And Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. Y'all, I know that what I'm about to do is very unusual, but I, I just, uh, sometimes I think we go, we are so accustomed to going through the motions until we don't realize we really don't realize uh, what we're doing. And uh, I want to ask, ask something. I need your help this morning with something. If, if you are in the car with somebody, if you are in the car or a vehicle with somebody who isn't a member of the Lord's church, uh, isn't a member of the Lord's church, the Church of Christ. I want your help. I want your help this morning. I just want you to ask, and uh, not, uh, not facetiously, not mean, but just because I'm concerned. I'm concerned about your soul, and most of all, God is concerned about your soul. If you're in the car with somebody who isn't a member of the Lord's Church, the Church of Christ, I want you to add, turn and ask in love, what is holding you back? What is holding you back? Is that okay? Man, that's I, I just, just, ask, just ask in love, what is holding you back? I know sometimes we don't want to ask questions, but I'm... Uh, I, I just want you to turn in love and ask, what is holding you back? Amen. And uh, we're going to sing one more verse of the song. And uh, as that verse of the song is sung, this verse is for you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my Lord, we say thank you, Lord. Oh, my Lord, we say thank you, Lord. Oh, and I 
just want to thank you, Lord. We know that you've been so good. Oh, my Lord, you've been so good. Oh, my Lord, we know you've been so just want to thank you, Lord, for giving me one more day. Thank you, Lord, for one more day. Thank you, Lord, for one want to thank you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we say thank you, thank you, Lord. Oh, my Lord, we say thank to thank you and I just want to thank you and I just want to thank you the part of the service where we partake in the offering and the communion. We ask that at this time, if you need a communion cup, could you please blow your horn or raise your hand out the window so we can get you a communion cup? If you need a communion cup, please blow your hand or blow your horn or raise your hand out the window so we can get you a cup. According to Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 28, it reads, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today with our heads humbly bowed. Thank you for your son's broken body and his shed blood. We pray that as we partake in this heavenly father that we do so with clean hands and humble hearts. In Christ's name we pray, amen. We have now come to the part of the service where we partake in the offering. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 7, it reads, But this I say, he which sowing sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. May we pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we come with our heads humbly bow. Thank you for this offering that we are about to receive. We pray that this offering will be used for the upkeep and edification of your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We will now have announcements. Eastern Church of Christ announcements, March the 28th, 2021. And before I read the announcements, I have a card that I would like to read. 
Dear Eastland brothers and sisters, thank you for your prayers and cards during my time of surgery. May God continue to bless you with godly love. That's from James Strickland, Brother James Strickland. Please keep Nancy Roberts and family in your prayers during the passing of our sister in Christ. Elizabeth Roberts was a member of, the, of Reach Group D. Arrangements are pending. Please stay tuned to the Eastland membership app or contact myself for updates. Communion kit distribution. We will be distributing communion on Saturday, April the 3rd from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. on the North parking lot. We ask that you remain in your vehicles. Worship on April the 4th. Weather permitting, we will offer drive-in worship at 1015 on Sunday, April the 4th. Fellowship Hall restrooms will be available on a limited basis. We will stream online as well. And also, the youth car wash. Uh, our Eastern Youth Group, grades 6 through 12, are hosting a car wash on Saturday, April the 10th, from 12 to 2. To benefit our 2021 Eastland missions, all members are invited to participate by bringing our vehicles. Uh, contact Brother Eric Gardner if you have uh, questions concerning that. Now at this time, we will have another song selection followed by a closing prayer. Everyone have a good time in the Lord this morning. Amen. Thank you, Brother Fulbright, for that wonderful message. Amen. Get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, church, and let's go home. Oh, get right, church. Yes, get right, church. Oh, get right, church, and let's go home. One more time, say, get right, church, and let's go home. I'm telling you, get right, church, and let's go home. Oh, get right, church. Yes, get right, church. Oh, get right, church, and let's go home. Pray with me, family. Our Father and our God, which art in heaven, Fathers, once again, we just thank you for allowing us to gather at your feet just one more time to hear a portion of your holy and divine word, Father. Amen. Father, we know that you are the true vine. Father, help us to be good branches. And Father, stay connected to you, Father, and to do your will in all ways, Father. And again, Father, we let it be our purpose each day that you allow us to see, Father, is to be good fruit bearers for you, Father. For we know that the harvest is plentiful, Father, but the workers are often so few. Again, Father, we just thank you for being the God that you are, for loving us and for keeping us, Father. We just ask that you would just bless us and be with each of us, Father, until we meet again, Father. We ask this in the precious name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 